Let's turn up this one. Let's head over to Colin Cowherd. Colin, what's on the show today? Well, two messages were sent yesterday in sports. One by LeBron and one by the best football coach in America. That's coming up. Thanks, Colin. Time for our final topic of the day. We have breaking news. The Ravens have agreed to a one-year deal with Robert Griffin III. RG3 hasn't played since the 2016 season with the Browns. He tweeted a few minutes ago, hashtag play like a Raven. Shannon, you played like a Raven. Yeah. What's your reaction? Uh, you're speechless. <laughs> I'm really yeah. at a loss, guys. Yeah. I don't begrudge RG3. I'm happy that he got an opportunity. <laughs> Me too. But we know Colin Kaepernick did not sign with the Ravens last year for non-football reasons. And for anyone in that organization to tell you otherwise would be disingenuous. They would be misspeaking the truth. So congratulations. Hopefully RG3 can th stay healthy. But again, mm. here's a guy that's not conventional. So you're going to have to have two offenses. And you know, Skip... There's only so much practice time. You don't really need two offenses. So I don't really, I, I, I'm just saying, I don't know, Skip. I don't know. Mm. So to me, this feels like a rather pathetic response to the criticism this organization took for not signing Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we got Robert mm -hmm. Griffin. And last seen in Cleveland, the Robert Griffin I used to know and love pre-draft, right. going back to the luck draft. Uh, I couldn't recognize that no. guy in Cleveland. Could you? And no. after his knee injury, he just got worse and worse and worse, and he wanted to become a pocket passer. And Joe Flacco, RG3, I don't think they really belong in the same pocket. And right? they still got Ryan Mallett. Well, I mean, if I you guess, if, he's if, a free agent, but they could have him. Uh, it just, I, 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 I look, like I said, I don't begrudge RG3. Neither do I. You, you, an opportunity presents itself, you go try to take full advantage of it. But let's not pretend that Colin Kaepernick is not in the NFL for any other th any other reason because the reason has been abundantly clear from the start. It has nothing to do no doubt. with his ability to play quarterback. No and that's doubt. what's a shame. Yep. It's sad. And almost as sad as what's happened to Robert Griffin, so I hope he can rebuild yes. his career. Well, I hope he can stay healthy. Yep. That's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 930 Eastern. Right now, Colin Cowherd tells you why LeBron is continuing his dominance of the Eastern Conference. The herd starts now. Ah, this is The Herd, wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles. Great show today. iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, FS1. Christine Leahy is joining me today. We have a lot of things happening. The RG3 story just broke. He's a backup. He's a little bit of a newsworthy backup, which I'm not a fan of, but we'll talk about that more. We've got amazing, an amazing battle between two stars that Christine will have in 30 minutes, which I think is Fascinating. I wonder what side you're going to take. Well, regardless, it's it's good. It's really it's good. It's really good. So we have a great show today. Uh, let, let me just start with this. Is that certain seasons aren't real long. The NFL season, the college football season, you know, the MLS season, they're, they're not that long. But then baseball is long. And NBA season is long. And so what happens when you get these really long seasons is like really great players pick their spots. Believe it or not, Derek Jeter wasn't as amped up in June against the Indians as he was in October uh, against the Red Sox, okay? So it's the reality of these long sports and these long days and these long seasons, people pick their spots. And I've said for years, and, and Christine's been on this, and she's absolutely right, LeBron's a message sender is that he's doing stuff through Instagram and social media and through his advertisers, and LeBron's a message sender. And some messages are tedious, silly, and uh, vanity-driven, and other messages mean stuff. So last night, LeBron sent another message, and that message is, coffee is for closers, and the Toronto Raptors are team decaf. Once again, the LeBron asteroid killed the baby dinosaurs. So here comes Toronto. They want us to believe in them. They're so very Canadian. Even their biggest fan, Drake, is the suburban rapper. They're nice, and they've got depth, and they're... The baby dinosaurs are not ready for the moment. The LeBron asteroid killed the baby dinosaurs again. And the thing is with Toronto, they're a number one seed only in name. They're really a four or a five seed, and that's in the East. Let's be honest about this. 
Gordon Hayward and Kyrie don't get hurt, the Celtics are the number one seed. LeBron, even with the reboots, probably a two seed. John Wall out, now a minute's restriction, Washington, probably a three seed if John Wall's healthy. And then if Markel Fultz wasn't missing, didn't have a shoulder issue or whatever it is psychologically he can't shoot, it's very possible that Philadelphia, a four seed, edging to be a three, would be a solid three seed. Toronto is a number one seed in name only. And we've seen twice now in the last couple of weeks the Raptors come into town, and you know they want these games. They've lost 13-17 to to LeBron. They want these games. And they can't win these games. Last night, Jose Calderon ate the Raptors alive. The problem with Toronto, their number one asset is depth. And depth in the playoffs is overrated because coaches all shorten the bench and you don't play backs-to-backs, so everybody's equally rested. They don't have a closer, does Toronto. They don't have a go-to guy late. They shoot a lot of threes, don't hit a bunch, and last night they couldn't stop LeBron or Jose Calderon. They are a number four to five seed. LeBron sent another message, and he does this. He picks his spots, just like the Warriors did last night. He picks his spots, and there's one of these games last night. It's on television. Everybody's watching. It means something. There's a psychological advantage, and he, again, squishes them. I, I, love, I love Drake. Drake is the perfect number one fan for the Raptors. He's nice. He's likable. People root for him. This team is so Canadian. Who hates him? They're impossible. They have a nice coach. They have nice players. They have depth. They let everybody have the ball. But in the end, the message was sent. Copies for closers. The Raptors are team decaf. Let me shift to this. So last night, I told you about this yesterday on the show. Little NFL here. I told you about this yesterday on the show that, um, you know, I love the draft. And I've always loved the draft. And the draft has always meant a lot to me. And I've got a If you go to my phone, of the 50, 60 sources I have, 40 are football sources. And last night I had the great fortune, not going to tell you who it is, what team it is. I had a GM. I had a dinner with a general manager in the National Football League. Third such dinner this pre-draft. And I'm just asking questions, 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 questions. And I saw this story come out today that the Patriots, who made that trade, Brandon Cooks, the headlines are all saying this morning, now the Patriots can go get a quarterback with one of their four picks in the first two rounds. I am here to tell you, the Patriots do not have their draft board made up yet. Because as I asked the GM who I had dinner with last night about his draft board, and he said, Colin, nobody, not even Cleveland, has everything finalized yet. He goes, fans think all we do is the draft. It's 30% of our job. Fans think we have the draft all laid out. No team right now has all their picks figured out. They're still doing work with scouts, regional scouts, national scouts. So the headlines are Patriots now going to get a quarterback. That cannot be confirmed. But what I'm about to tell you can be confirmed. And much like LeBron, I believe, this is my theory, Bill Belichick is sending a message. Now, we all know Belichick, this has been published now, was furious when Bob Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, made him trade Garoppolo. Everybody downplayed it. Multiple published reports from even those inside and around the Patriot team as beat reporters, it ticked Belichick off. And Kraft sided with Tom Brady. Look at Tom's numbers, Bill. Tom has won his Super Bowls. Look at the Super Bowl against Atlanta. He's still amazing. So here's what New England has done. I am supposed to believe this is a coincidence. That in the last four to five months, when Brady and Belichick have now a published and well-documented fracturing issue, festering fracturing issue, Belichick has let Tom's number one running back go, Deion Lewis. His number one deep threat yesterday is now a Ram, Brandon Cooks. His backside protector, Nate Solder, is now gone. Cameron Fleming, who was the starting right tackle at the end of the year, gone. And because Julian Edelman was out, 
Who was his number one playoff receiver last year? Danny Amendola. They let him go. Five key offensive players have all been allowed to walk out the door. So that means Tom Brady goes into this year at 40 with his two best offensive pieces, 32-year-old Julian Edelman, off an ACL surgery, and the not physically reliable Gronk. If one of them gets hurt, Tom Brady has never had a football team where he will have to pull it more than this year. Sacked more, pressured more, less home runs on a deep ball, less of a running game. What does it mean? Colin, what are you saying? I'm supposed to believe that it is a coincidence that his best running back, his left tackle, his best slot receiver, his best deep threat, his right tackle, bye bye Gosh, wish we could have kept you. Wish we could have kept you. Wish we could keep you. You know what that is? In one year, Brady's numbers are going down. And Belichick's going to go to Bob Kraft and say, we're finally seeing his age. Because Tom's been fooling us with age. Unless you really go into the numbers, comes back against Atlanta. Last year, you look at his numbers, there's no erosion. But if you go inside him like Belichick does with data, there is proof that in November, December, January, Tom is coming down, down, down. Five valuable resources out. And you know what that GM told me last night about the NFL draft? Well, what do you know? It's a great draft, he said but it's the worst wide receiver draft in years. There is no help now that Brandon Cooks is gone. Now that Danny Amendola is gone, you're not getting it in this class. Never forget the final episode, Tom versus Time, Giselle Bunchen. Remember, Giselle Bunchen said this, and Tom let it stay in the documentary. These last two years have been very challenging for him in so many ways. And I think he just want, you know, he, he tells me I love it so much and I just want to go to work and feel appreciated and have fun. I want to feel appreciated. And do you remember two days later what Albert Breer, who covers the Patriots, said about that clip? The one thing that Bill Belichick has to do, he has to repair the relationship with Tom Brady. I'm sure you guys saw the end of Tom versus Time. He had full editorial control out of the, over that. If they had fixed it in the last couple of weeks, he could have gone to Gotham Chopra and said, you know what, take the part with Giselle saying he wants to feel appreciated. Take that out of there. We don't need that in there. That's still in there. That means the problem between Brady and Belichick isn't fixed yet. And I'm not saying they need to go out and have beers together after games. I'm not saying they need to go to dinner during the week. But they need to get their relationship level again. Deion Lewis, Brandon Cooks, Nate Solder, Cameron Fleming, Danny Amendola, weak NFL receiving draft. Gone, 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 gone. Belichick wants the power back from Tom. And the only person in that organization that can say no to Bill is Kraft. After this season, Tom numbers dip. Belichick finally wins for the final time, the battle of who really controls the franchise. Uh, good stuff today. Absolutely packed. Um, got a call right after the show yesterday um, from somebody who I deeply trust. And uh, the very latest on Odell Beckham Jr. And depending on your opinion of Odell, the truth may hurt. That's coming up. To fact of life, attorneys are expensive. You're likely to pay, I can't even believe this, $300 an hour. Lord, that is, wow, don't get in trouble. Here's the good news. Smart business owners are turning to LegalZoom. Over 2 million Americans have used to start their business with LLCs and corporations and more. But even after your business is set up, LegalZoom can help you out. Lease agreements, changing tax laws, contract reviews, it's all part of running your biz, and it's doubtful you're an expert at that. You're an expert at the business, but not all of the business minutiae. 
LegalZoom has created a business legal plan. They have vetted independent attorneys and tax professionals, and they are available in all 50 states. They're not a law firm. Instead, you pay one low upfront price. Right now, check out LegalZoom's business legal plan. You know where to go, LegalZoom.com, code Colin. Where life meets legal, LegalZoom.com, code C-O-L-I-N. Do not mistake serenity for weakness. Do not misjudge quiet tranquility for the power of...